You might be wondering if you could climb Mount Fuji in the off season. Well, it's a yes and a no. Um, in springtime, yes. In the winter time, no. So, what is it really like to hike Mount Fuji in the off season? Climbing Mount Fuji has been one of my ultimate goals in Japan, and I've always been looking at it from afar when hiking other mountains in the Kanto area. Now, since I've got an opportunity to climb it off season, I didn't hesitate to take it. In this video, I'll share with you on how I hiked to Mount Fuji in the off season. For this hike, I reached out to my most trusted outdoor activity organizer in Japan, David of Kanto Adventures. I like joining his trips, especially on dangerous adventures, just like this one. So if you'd like to know how he does Fuji off-season trips, stick with me till the end of this video. We drove up towards the fifth station of Mount Fuji. The gates going to the fifth station are open for private vehicles on the last days of April, sometimes later, like the first week of May. Actually, it depends on the weather and how much snow is still left in the mountain. Um, the climb started at the fifth station. The easiest part of the hike was climbing the fifth to the sixth station. Since this was a day hike, we basically hiked as fast as we could so that we could follow our schedule properly. Um, we did the same thing from the seventh up to the eighth station and basically it was a normal hike from the 5th to the 8th station. Before we reached the 8th station, we came across this man. His name is Jitsukawa Yoshinobu. Apparently this man have summited Mount Fuji for over 2,000 times already, and he's still going for it. They call him Mr. Fujisan. I believe he's 79 years old and upon hearing this feed, I was just like, that's crazy man, Jesus. Please protect this man at all cost. So we took the opportunity to take a picture with the legend. From the 8th station, I was already seeing large patches of snow. And from this point, I started to get lightheaded. Um, it is because of the altitude. This is one of the mild symptoms of altitude sickness. Well, it was the highest point I've ever been in my life. So I guess it was normal. By the time we reached the 9.5th station, uh, we started putting on our helmets and crampons. The climb going towards the 10th station was a bit steep, but nothing technical. After reaching the last station, uh, we went up to the weather station where the highest peak of Mount Fuji lies, the Kengamine Peak. From Kengamine, um, you'll be able to see the whole crater. When we reached the peak, personally, I felt very accomplished. That moment felt very amazing. I wasn't able to take a lot of video clips up there because I totally forgot to. I was very happy that I didn't need anything else. For our descent, the plan was to sled down the 9.5th station to the 8th station, dropping down for about 450 meters. At first, I was a bit scared because I have only snowboarded once and it wasn't so fun because I sucked. <laughs> so I was like, OMG, I hope I don't overdo it and sled all the way down to the fifth station. So if you haven't sledded before and it's your first time, don't worry because before we did the sledding, the trip leader gave us um, detailed instructions on how to sled. You'll have time to practice as well. Okay. 
But this clip is clearly showing that I was having a great time, contrary to what I've said earlier. So let's talk about the positive and the negative sides of hiking Mount Fuji in the off season. The goods are there will be less people in the mountain and that means there will be no queue. There are more activities to do and more adventures to challenge. And there is a less chance of getting altitude sickness because it's a day hike. The bads are it is hard to access without a personal vehicle. And there's a strict schedule you'd have to follow. And it is dangerous because you need specific equipments to safely climb because of the snow and ice. Okay, so I'm just very grateful and delighted to have been able to climb Mount Fuji in the off season because uh, it would have been a different story if I climbed it in summer. In my personal opinion, I had a great time, but for our trip leader, I don't know because I think he's been up and down Mount Fuji for more or less 150 times already. I just hope he had a good company. Um, honestly, I'm very thankful to him for this wonderful opportunity. I will post the links and other information about Kanto Adventures in the description below. So check their website. You'll find a lot of great information and adventures on their website for sure. Have you ever climbed Mount Fuji? How was your experience? Let me know in the comments. And if you find this video useful or helpful, please share it with your friends. So till next time. Bye. Oh, I almost forgot. Please subscribe.